exclusionary rule opens the door for the development of workable rules governing search and seizure. Rules that provide protection for the individual rights guaranteed by the constitutional provisions. Wait, wait a minute, I, I've got to disagree with that. What about the rights of society at large to be protected from the lawless elements? Should the protection of the individual be gained at the disproportionate loss to society? <sighs> to be continued. Well, that's all for tonight. Let's hit those books, folks. We have midterms next week. Oh, I'm sorry if I gave you a hard time. Oh, don't be. Students like you make teaching much more interesting. You inspire other minds. I like that. Thank you. Ms. Randolph. Cynthia, in the classroom. It's Ms. Randolph out here. And Cynthia. Mine's Vince. I know. Uh, there's this new play in town. But of mind from back east is in it. I have a couple of tickets. I was wondering. Oh, gee, Vince, that's awfully sweet of you, but I make it a habit never to date my students. I make it a habit never to date my teachers, usually. Well, believe me, if I was ever going to break my rule, it would have to be with somebody like you. Actually, I'm involved. How involved? Very. Oh, look, I've got to run. I'm sorry. I drive around and I think about the book, what I've written, and what I've got left to do. I lose track of time. Well, maybe we can make up for all that when we get home, huh? Versus California. Lovejoy versus California. The Mickelson rule applies. Lovejoy was case law involving a suspiciously parked car. All well, right. I didn't think I knew that. No, I didn't think you knew it. I didn't either. No, I know you didn't know it. <laughs> Come on, Hooker. It's too nice a day for a pop quiz. All right. It's not me that has a law midterm coming up. You're the one that wants to be a lawyer. I just figure the better educated I am with the points and authorities on search and seizure, the better cop I'm going to be on the streets. Besides, you should see my teacher. <laughs> Did you see that? Well, I don't Sorry, I didn't make uh, Sally's funeral. You had a case in court. Besides, you really didn't know her. No, but I know you two are good friends. The best. Four Adam 16, 211 in progress at the Lucky Loan Check Cashing Service, 750 Holman. 
Four suspects wearing ski masks and armed with sawed-off shotguns and 45s. Four Adam 16, your call is code three. Oh man, sawed-offs and 45s. This is 30, we're rolling back up to 16's call. Control, can you repeat that address? Come on, stay shaking big time. 750 Holman. Control, we have the address. We're rolling with a two-minute ETA. All right, let's get out of here. Come on. Fired at the Lucky Loan Company. Man down, requesting an ambulance. This is 4 Adam 30. Show us code 6 of the crime scene. Frank Morland sent you. Hey! It looks like he'll make it. I'm calling Andrew. on his way to City Hospital. I lost the other one. His name's Ted Barnes, a retired cop. Friend of Hooker's. Come on, Teddy, fight it. Fight it. Fight it. Come on, Teddy. Please, may I? If you can, say after me. Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. To the degree that you are needful and I am capable, I absolve you of all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
what happens if they put the squeeze on Moreland and he talks? They won't. He knows that in or out of the joint, I can get to him. Cops got a shotgun. What if they trace it back to Ellison? Well, if that time comes, we'll eliminate the problem. Like you're eventually going to eliminate that dumb blonde school teacher you're living with? Straight on. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Just talking about you. Pull up a chair. I heard about Moreland. What about my piece, man? There ain't many works around that good. The cops start asking around. They're going to come looking around. Oh, by that time, we'll be long gone in the breeze, old buddy. I'm going to need a new shotgun made, though. We're going to need it in two days. This is a full-blown gig, man. Go ahead, tell him. 250 Gs. You're serious? Your cut's 10%, old buddy. That's 25,000. Four out of 16, the hospital reports your robbery suspect, Frank Moreland, is in stable condition. A criminal records check indicates Moreland has a prior record for robbery, assault, and manslaughter. Four item 16, Roger. 16, Sergeant Schaefer of the shooting team requests Officer Sheraton report to the station code 2. Roger, dispatch. Tell Schaefer we're en route. a wall search instead of proning out the suspect. Come on, Schaefer. We've been at this for over three hours. Give the lady a break, huh? Corrigan, you know as well as I do why we have to keep at this. The lady had her gun taken away. If it hadn't been for you, she'd have been blown away. Good tactics, proper search procedures might have prevented this shooting. It's like a dream. When I looked up to the barrel of my gun, I knew the muzzle flash was coming and that it would all be over. And I thought about my dad and my friends. And I didn't feel sorry for me. I, I just felt bad. I thought, this is a really stupid way to die. Hey, look, something's got to come out here. Stacy lost a good friend recently. They buried her just yesterday. She's had a lot on her mind. But she's lucky. She's damn lucky her preoccupation with a personal problem didn't cost her her own life. Frank Moreland is a stone killer. You came down a little hard on Stacy. Yes, I, I did. Maybe she'll remember it for a long time, at least long enough to count for the next time around. OK, I think I know where you're coming from. You think? What do you mean, think? Complacency kills cops. Schaefer's going to say that or something like it in the shooting report. But somebody's going to come to you and ask whether or not Stacy should stay on the street. Maybe I'll have to go to them. Well, she's my partner. If you'd been 30 seconds late, she'd have been a dead partner. It's called survival, Jim. Yours, hers, anybody you're working with. Maybe it was forgetting about survival that killed your friend, Ted Barnes. He all he had was tombstone courage. He didn't have to die. Why the hell couldn't he have waited for backup? For us to arrive. Sawed off. That wasted Ted is still out there. I want him. And the trigger man. The guy who modified this was no garage gunsmith with a hacksaw. What are you doing here? I had some paperwork to catch up on. You got off watch four hours ago, Jim. You were still there with the shooting team. I didn't want to leave until I... Until uh, what? You made sure your incompetent partner made it through the day in one piece? Incompetent? Is that what you got out of that grilling? I get my hands on Sergeant Wait Schaefer. Wait a minute. I'm the one who blew it, not Schaefer. So you made a mistake. Yeah, I got news for you. Cops are human. Think because we put on a badge we're perfect? When you put it on and you're a woman, you have to be. According to whose Bible? Sergeant Schaefer's or your own? How about hookers? Caswell and Janie will go in first. Janie's gonna cover the rear door. Todd stops right here. Okay, what about security? 
No problem. There's a security guard station right here. We'll take him out hard and fast. Jack? Put that away. It's just my old lady. Here you go. Is that really necessary? No, it's just my paranoia, I guess. Oh, I was hoping you'd outgrow that. What's he doing here? Porter? You remember him, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure, I remember Porter. How can you forget that associating with him violates your parole? Hey, come on, give me a break, will you? Yeah, well, it's always nice to see you too, Miss Randolph. You still donating time down at the Prisoner's Defense League? Well, ain't you got the need no more since you sleeping with your own forbidden toy? You wasp do-gooders never cease to humor me. Hey, come on, man, that's enough. Let's go. Moreland's still stonewalling? He's suffering from a heavy case of prison ethics. Now, they're very loyal to his buddies. You're scared to death they'll smell a snitch. He'll end up with a sliced artery in some corner of the prison yard. Jim, pull his associate's file. See if any of his friends fit the robbery M.O. I found an expert in refitted shotguns. I thought maybe I Romano could... and I have that end covered. Thank you. Let's go, Jim. He never sets foot in here again. None of them. You swore. I know. I know. I swore I wouldn't see any of the guys You're anymore. You're damn right you did. That's another promise you broke. Well, what's that supposed to mean, huh? What that means... What that means is sometimes I wonder what I fell in love with. The words the man wrote or the man who wrote the words. Hey, come on, honey. Give me a break, will you? I'm trying to listen to words. They're just not coming. What does your book have to do with Porter being in my home? Research, baby. I mean, Porter has seen things that I never would see before. I need his insight. I need to know what's going on inside his mind. He resents me, what I did for you and couldn't do for him. I tried to help him. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with my book, too. Expose the system from the inside. That way, there's a better chance of making humane changes for everybody. That's why it's so important you don't jeopardize it. Hey, I wouldn't disappoint you. Not after all you did for me to get me out on parole. I need you. And I know that you need me. This is a real good job, Hooker. Who's that good at? And that dirty. Well, uh, you guys got most of them in jail. But Tommy Ellison's out. Best laid than millman we had. He worked here? Mm-hmm. Trouble with Tommy was um, he liked to bet on slow horses and fast women. Got in real deep with the boys. Of course, they came up with a way he could pay off. Making illegal firearms for them. Machine guns, silencers, you name it, he made it. Finally got caught and went to prison. I'd like to talk to him, man. He's an iron freak. Uh, I hear he goes to that um, new house for over on Lexington. What does he look like? Little guy, uh, dark haired, uh, maybe 30. You wonder where he gets the strength to pump that iron. Thanks. Todd. The receptionist says you were a friend of Tommy Ellison. I was. Does he uh, come around very often? What? Uh, we were wondering if he uh, worked out here. Uh-huh. Does he come around at any specific time? At 1 o'clock. We'll stick around. Uh, thank you. Hello. We have trouble with Tommy Ellison. What? Cops are looking for him. They are? Yeah. 
So what are we gonna do? Tommy's a lightweight. The cops can twist him. So you want me to handle it? Do what you have to do. Something on your mind, Junior? I was wondering how you'd be feeling if I'd been the one looking down the end of that gun barrel instead of Stacy. It's very simple. I'd be chewing you out or bearing you. I didn't ask how you'd act. I asked how you'd feel. I don't know. Stacy's like one of my own kids. If something ever happened to her... Then she doesn't just have to be good. She's got to survive her, Mom. She's got to be better than the best. Point. She is better than the best. I know. Does Stacy know that? I think you should talk to her. I plan to. Four Adam 30, meet Officer Corrigan on TAC 2. Go, Jim. Booker, I ran Moreland's associates. Came up with half a dozen fitting our MO. Have your best bets. How about a con who specializes in gun takeaway classes for his prison buddies? The prison authorities made a tape of something like that about a year ago. One and the same. Con's name is Jack Lewis. Start running down Jack Lewis and see if you can get me a copy of that tape. Roger. Hooker, there. That looks like our gun expert, Tommy Ellison. Hey, Tommy! Let's go. Ellison. Made it through surgery. What about the guy who shot him? I booked him in the jail ward. His injuries are minor, but he's stonewalling. What'd you get from Ellison? <laughs> it's kind of tough to talk with a bullet in your throat, but he did give me a name. Jack Lewis. Jack Lewis? It's all coming together. The shooter's name is Todd Caswell. I pulled his package. His record shows time done for armed robbery in San Quentin. And get this, his partner in crime, Frank Morland. The guy who took away Stacy's gun. I'm one of Jack Lewis's disciples. I tell you, Paul, the day they saddle me with some blonde mini cop for a partner, that's the day I quit. Or I quit real police work, put on the old blinders. So you don't get tempted in any situation that might get dangerous. I mean, ain't this job tough enough without having to depend on some ponytail munchkin to back you up if you get in trouble? Yeah, it's tough feeling like John Wayne, isn't it, Schaefer? When an attractive lady can do the job. 
Well, now, that's kind of Sheridan's problem, isn't it? I mean, she didn't do the job, did she? You know, they say I got to live with this federally ordered affirmative action, including the hiring of uh, women and minorities. But there's nothing in that directive that says I got to like it. You know, Schaefer, the problem with prejudice is that it's a matter of opinion that belongs to somebody we dislike. Why don't you get out of my face, Hooker? If I wanted to fight with someone, I'd have gone home to my old lady. Want some company, Stace? Ah, I've about to show us out there. Don't patronize me, Hooker. I can take care of myself. I can't even remember the last time I had nails. No matter what happened out there, you're still a good cop, Sheridan. You're only a good cop as long as you think you are. That doesn't sound like a hooker trained cop to me. Maybe you just let me waltz through probation on account of... for a lot of reasons. Including the fact that I'm the captain's daughter. That's a lot of bull in your going. Where's all this coming from? You know where it's coming from. I thought you had more guts than that. Don't push me with that, Hooker. I've got more problems to deal with here than just having my gun taken away. You know, one woman can do something stupid and it reflects on all the other female cops. But if a man does the same thing, it doesn't reflect on the other men. Fear is the motivating factor. It always is. Sure. They're worried about us getting killed. More like afraid that we'll get them killed. That's what's been bothering you too, huh, Hooker? I'm not sure if I should be out there either. Well, maybe I can't handle it anymore. All right. You made a mistake out there. Hopefully you learned something from it. You're scheduled for an in-service refresher course that I'm teaching at the academy tomorrow morning. It's important that you be there. What we're seeing is becoming more and more commonplace in our jails and prisons. Inmates teaching other cons how to become professional criminals. Here you see two inmates practicing a gun takeaway that was used by a 211 suspect and one of our own officers. As seasoned officers, you're all aware of the fact that an officer's survival depends on alertness, attention to proper police procedures, and the use of good field tactics. Have a plan. If you or your partner find yourselves at a disadvantage, be ready to act. Use a code signal of some sort, which will send you both into action, not surrender. This group's guru is Jack Lewis, a multi-talented hood who's gained some notoriety for a book of prison poems he's written, but whose real talents lie in teaching other cons how to disarm cops. I might add, I know this guy, Lewis. He did a gun takeaway in an officer up in Oakland. Put six of the officers on into him. Well, what did you think of the tape? To be honest, it scared the hell out of me. I kept seeing Moreland with my gun, thinking how close I came to buying it. The thing is, did you learn anything from it? Yeah. I know I never want to get caught in a situation like that again. Someone's got the drop on me. Well, maybe you'll be lucky. Maybe you won't. On the other hand, it could happen tomorrow evening. To you, to me, to any cop. It's part of the job. The technique is down to perfection. Of course. Makes you wonder how many students this guy Lewis has put out on the street. Plenty. Background intelligence on him says he's not only a, a hot-shot stick-up artist, he's a fast-talking flim-flam man. Why don't you check on Lewis? See if he's still in the joint. Jim, contact the armored truck company. See what you can find out. Four out of 30, your request to adult authority has been confirmed. Suspect Jack Lewis is out on parole from San Quentin. His parole agent has supplied an address, 2538 South Mariposa, apartment 7. Four item 30, roger. Jack, this is fantastic. I think a couple more pages as good as this. And we'll get in touch with that publisher I told you about. You're the first person that ever really believed in me. Yes? Jack, it's two policemen.
Vince? Jack Lewis. So what's this all about? It's about a friend of mine who was killed in the robbery of a check cashing place. It's about an officer of mine who almost lost her life in a gun takeaway that you taught to one of your San Quentin disciples. A guy by the name of Frank Moreland, remember? I never heard of him. Sure you have. He was a cellmate of Todd Caswell. Perhaps you heard that Caswell was off the street, but not before he pumped a 22 into a guy by the name of Tommy Ellison. Or maybe you never heard of him. Well, that's a real touching tale, uh, Sergeant. But obviously, you're mistaken. No, I've got my facts straight. I'm just verifying them. Look, this is my apartment. You have no... Oh, no, you look, lady. Looks like you and this gentleman have set up good housekeeping rules. But maybe you don't know he's out on parole for armed robbery and the second-degree murder of an Oakland policeman. I'm perfectly aware of that. I'm also his attorney. Cynthia, this man has killed a policeman. And he's paid for his mistake, Vince. And I thought you had more respect for the law on yourself. Seems you've been had, lady. This guy owes more than he can ever repay in 10 lifetimes. You want to tell this lady and me where you were Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock? You don't have to answer, Jack. What are you writing? A How to Kill a Cop book? I think you'd better leave, Sergeant. Friday afternoon. That's about enough. You're on parole, Lois. Hanging by a short rope. Do you want me to cut it for you? He was with me all day. Now, you heard my attorney. We'll be around. And your parole conditions say you better be. You know, love and justice are said to be blind. In your case, Miss Randolph, I suggest you remove the blindfold long enough to distinguish the difference between the good guys and the bad guys, the victims and the vicious. You had something for that lady, huh? Had. Sorry. So am I. For her. I mean, she probably fell in love with his jailhouse poetry, and he figured he'd have it better than he ever had in his whole life with her. He lied to her, just like he lied to us, because it's the only thing he knows how to do. She lied for him. You can tell because she's not used to it. Jack, you can't run. Watch me. Don't leave that constable on me about a parolee not being discharged, just serving out his sentence in a prison without any walls. It's the law, Jack. Hey, you heard those cops. They're setting me up to go back. If I go back in the joint, I'm a dead man. Do you want that? I only want what's best for you. Well, this morning in bed, it was us. You and me. What happened to that, huh, Cindy? Jack, if you'll just stay here, fight it through, finish the book. Now, you lied to those cops for me. That puts you on my side of the fence. All right, maybe I don't know everything there is to know about you. You want to know what there is to know about me? Well, I'm going to tell you. You don't shut the door on me ever. You understand that? Jack, I never... You want to know what there is to know about me? Well, I'm going to show you right here and now. Let's go. Jack! Jack! There. There. That's what I'm about. get an early start. Hope I'm not interfering with your workout. I usually have this place to myself this early in the morning, but since you seem to be practicing some of my old academy training advice, I'll share it with you. The consummate sensei, always teaching. Do you remember my lesson on the dangers of lag time? Sure. The reaction gap between the decision to act and the actual action. It's what officer survival is all about. There's no quarter given by the bad guy on the streets. To be a policeman, you have to learn to defend yourself. And your partner. And those who can't defend themselves. If you can't handle that, then you don't deserve to be out there. And it's not a matter of man or woman. That isn't part of the issue. You either believe in yourself or you don't. But when other people no longer believe in me, Stacy, if you think that you're a good policeman, believe it. Because if you don't, how can you expect anybody else to?
Hooker, we got another report from Quentin. Lewis had a girl who visited him a lot. She lives here, too. Yeah, we met her. His live-in. Her name is Cynthia Randolph. She's an attorney, teaches at City College. Now, this is a different one. Her name is Janie Holmes. Mano just talked to her landlady. Janie's already left for work, and you'll never guess what she does. Operations officer for the Commonwealth Thrift Bank, the bank that handles the fast cash deposits. I'll go pick up Vince. We'll talk to the personnel department. We'll meet you later on the air after we pick up Janie Holmes. I've seen her before. She was at the gym when we were asking about Tommy Ellison. That's right. And ten minutes later, casual capped Ellison. Just one big happy family. But put a call into your security people. Janie works out of the South Coast branch at uh, Lincoln and Grand. They handle all the distribution of funds by armored truck for the fast cash chain. Today is Wednesday. It's payday at the Colton Aircraft Company in the Valley. There's a fast cash place right around the corner from Colton. Yeah, but I got a feeling if Lewis's bunch is going to make a hit, they're not going to try for a hit on a check cashing place. Sure, go directly to the source. Maybe even come up with something extra. The Holmes girl definitely knows the layout and delivery schedule at the bank. We're en route to the bank with an ETA of two minutes. We'll meet you there, code two. Roger, 30. We're rolling. We'll be there in three. All you gotta do is look out and drive the first leg. If you do your part, nobody's gonna get hurt, all right? From here on in, you belong to me. Okay, guys, hard and fast. Hey, this is a hold up. Any idiot who doesn't do what I say is dead. Get on the floor, tell us with your hands over your head. You, let us do the chicken, get out of there. All the way down, down! Nobody move! Any unit in the vicinity able to handle a 211 silent at the Commonwealth Thrift Bank, 455 South Grand, come in and identify. That's our bank. Four out of 30, we'll handle the hot shot. Roger 30, your call is code three. We're only two blocks away for the hole in the siren. Cops! That looks like a getaway car to me. What's up? Cops. We'll have to use this switch car. What about Janie and Cynthia? Hey, forget about it, man. When it comes down to it, they're all just bronze. Let's go. here, he'd have blown your guts out. Yeah, put your hands behind your neck, just the way you did. Get out! Move! Against the car. Hands on your head. All right, everybody, you can get up. Chevy, uh, Lawson and Comstock. Romano, you stay with the women. Corrigan, you handle the bank. You come with me.
There he is. Make a move and I'll cut you in half. Give me that gun. Come on! Make a move, lady, and your partner's dead. Drop your gun! Stacy, take it easy. You can't be expected to handle a situation like this. Right. Romano, cheer up. If Cynthia wasn't there voluntarily, it'll come out in court. I just can't figure it. How could she get so screwed up as to even go along with them? Maybe her heart and her head had no idea what the other one was doing. Somehow he snowed her. And by the time he found out about her, it was too late. Stacy. How'd it go? Okay, I guess. I guess uh, your shooting was in policy, huh? Hey, Sheridan. Yes? That was one fine shooting. You did a hell of a job, officer. I've had a good teacher. 